Mm-hmm, mm hmm What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Amber, and today we're gonna talk L Word Talk. I'm gonna do a recap of the season one of the L Word Generation Q. I'm gonna give you guys my opinions and what I thought about it, as well as talk about some of the opinions that I've been given, especially after I did the interview with people and they are like, oh my God, how was meeting the characters and hanging out with them and things like that. We gotta do this, you feel me? I gotta put my chapstick on for this. By the way, anything that I have to say about this season has nothing to do with these actors in real life, because I've met them and I've hung out with them so please know that ahead of time I'm gonna do this by going through each character and then what they went through this season and my opinions on it and then I'm gonna give my overall opinion of the season in general please everybody write down your notes and then at the end give me a full-on comment about how you guys feel about all the things that I'm about to talk about or even some things that I missed let's do this so the first thing I just have to say is I just fucking love Alice, yo. Like, what would we do without Alice? She is just like the fun, just lightheartedness that carries us through this dramatic ass show. Just in the past, I've always loved Alice. And as those old seasons ended, I was like, yo, if y'all don't come back and let Alice actually have like a love story, she's not gonna be with Tasha. Just let her love life be all that she deserves. Cause she's always got the short end of the stick. And that's always bothered me because she deserves it. You feel me? Like, after day. Dana, come on, man. Just like give her the love of her life and let her be happy. I mean, can I get a gay man for that? Like the thing that made me so happy is Alice coming back and having a show. I felt like that was so spot on and perfect. That's exactly what she needed. When the scenes first started happening, I saw that she had a girlfriend with kids and stuff. I was like, what? But to see her mess it up and kind of just be like, oh, you know, try to figure it out. I thought that was so Alice and I thought it was really cute. The whole thing that she went through with Thruple and trying to introduce openness was really actually dope because I think that that does happen happen a lot. But they did it in a very grown way and I thought that was really cool because a lot of times they throw lesbian stereotypes which has happened on the show a lot of just being sexually active and just doing all this stuff without thinking and I don't think that lesbians actually really do that most of the time. But I'm gonna talk about that more later. Now let's get into Shane. All I wanted was Shane not to be a mess. Shane is always putting herself in a bad situation. Having sex with somebody that she's not supposed to, leaving, doing drugs, being crazy, leaving Carmen. I mean all these things, so all I wanted to see was Shane just be better. And I was just so happy to see Shane come back, be fly as hell, have a dope ass house, and buy the bar, and really make a substantial impact in the lesbian community, because I wish that was real. We don't have a lesbian bar in LA, so I was happy to see that on the show, and hopefully it will come to fruition in real life. And Shane's just the one to do that, because Shane used to be in them clubs, you feel me? And let's not even talk about her wife. Oh my god, you guys. My heart dropped. I have been following Miss Scott, which is Lex Scott, the one that plays Kiara, her wife on Instagram for years. She has been my Instagram crush for years and I screamed at the moment when she came on the screen because I was like, Shane would get my Instagram crush. She would. Shane is not even like a real human but we battle with girls. Like it's crazy, you feel me? Anyways, I was so happy to see that. I thought that it made sense and it was very beautiful and I hope their situation works out because Shane was just trying to calmly explain that like, hey, let's just be thoughtful about this next time and like maybe go about the process that makes me comfortable but Kiara, I think, after losing the baby, was kind of in her emotions, and that probably seems how they even fought in the first place. Like, that seems to be their main issue, because other than that, they seem really dope. So, Shane, good job at picking your girl. That was lit. Now, I know everybody wants Carmen to come back. I'm just, I, I, I feel so many ways about that. Like, of course, if you would've asked me last summer, I would've been like, hell yeah. But after Sarah Sahi, the person that actually plays Carmen, attacked my best friend on television earlier this year, it put a very sour taste in my mouth and now I'm just like whatever I don't need Carmen which also breaks my heart because she was my first girlfriend in my head growing up I feel like she was everybody's I'm unsure about it you know what I'm saying but I'm just really happy with this Kiara situation so Shane you're doing well, sweetie. So let's put Bet to the end, because I love Bet so much. And let's talk about these other characters, right? First and foremost, I have to say that I think they did a pretty good job at intertwining the old characters with the new characters. I still feel like it's a little bit lacking on the connection with Micah, but I think it'll get better as the show goes on. They do have a season two, so this is really exciting. But let's go with Sophie. Sophie seems sweet. I like that Sophie's like on her shit, you know what I'm saying, working for Alice. I love the representation of a Dominican woman. Hello, let's get it. But Listen, this is what I'm gonna say. I'm not trying to stand up for Danny because we're gonna talk about Danny next, but Sophie. 
as soon as you learn that you were felt a certain way about what Danny was doing and you even had a thought to even kiss or do anything with anybody else, you should have put a break between you and Danny. You cannot resort to cheating. And that's one of the things that I hate about the L word sometimes is like there's a lot of cheating going on and I'm just not down with that. You gonna have sex at work? That's crazy. And then go back and lay down with Danny at home? We are too grown for things like that. We can't be doing that. But that brings us to Danny. Danny is hot, classy, intelligent, a little sexy, you know what I'm saying? But your communication is lacking, especially with the person you're supposed to be the closest to, like your fiance. It seems like your job with your dad was a lot. To be able to handle that, but then not be able to handle this thing with Bet just doesn't make sense to me, girl. Like, you need to be able to communicate better with your partner. How are you gonna marry someone you can't even talk to about what's going on in your mind? It seems like there was chemistry at first, and now now, the chemistry just seems forced because the love languages aren't matching up because clearly Sophie feels like she tried and she feels defeated and doesn't want to try anymore and Danny just does not understand that you're not giving your partner anything of what, what's going on with you and so then they're both resorting to some bullshit. I'm not sure if I support that relationship. Finley! Let's talk about Finley who is a wild crazy fun character. I feel like after we started getting into episode 2 and 3 I started seeing a lot of people's comments of like oh this character annoys me this character is pissing me off but like I think that Finley represents a lot of people that I know in LA you know trying to live out their dreams can't really get themselves together if you're in that position where you feel like I don't really have stability in a lot of these areas you can be kind of unstable sometimes calm down on Finley a little bit let her grow but I do think that people felt that way because the writers seem to write Finley in every single scenario I don't remember a scene that Finley just wasn't in every single episode she's working with Alice and she's at the house with everybody then all of a sudden she's living with Shane and then all of a sudden she's working at Shane's thing and then she has the priest situation and then all of a sudden her and Sophie go from bros to not bros. Let's just like be easy on, on Finley and let's see where the writers go with this. I think that's the only thing is like we can just limit the activity there. You know what I mean? Micah. Micah in real life, Leo, is such a sweet person. I love the representation period. I am looking forward to Micah developing and like being more a part of everybody because I feel like as the episodes went along, Micah was separated from everyone. And then and I knew that Jose, the neighbor boo, was gonna have something to hide. I knew it the whole time, y'all. First of all, it's hard to date anyone at your gym. Like, if you stop dating and you go to the gym, you're like always like, dang, I wonder if I'm gonna see him and you're ducking and hiding. So imagine a neighbor and then them being the manager of your building, like you gotta go give the check to them every month. That already started out bad. I mean, am I tripping? Can I get a gay man for that? And that just brings up a subject in my mind. And be honest, lesbians. How many lesbians actually watch gay men porn? And don't try to lie to me because I've accidentally sat in rooms where my friends we were playing the Never Have I Ever and drunk and hella lesbians and they brought it up. And I was like, oh, oh we, oh we, oh we all do this sometimes? If y'all need an explanation on that, I'll give it in a future video and we'll just make it about that. Cause there's reasons why that maybe you might not understand if you don't understand that right off the bat. Bet, oh bet, oh bet. Oh Lord, what will we do without bet? I hear Bet's name and I glow and I smile and I'm just in love. I was in love when I was younger and I'm still in love now and Lord Jesus, when she shows up on the screen, it's like this hallelujah moment for me. I always said that when I was younger, I felt like I had a mix between, I felt like I was Bet and then I was in love with Bet. Cause when I was younger and girly, Bet was me. Being biracial, being a boss, even though she was like more feminine, she was still a man. You already knew that, you know what I'm saying, there was big dick energy there. I just love that about Bet. I was so excited for Bet return and running for mayor. That was so perfect. Like, yes, political career. Of course, I'm like sad that she didn't win, but I think it was like a big step. She made a good impact, and I feel like the next season she's going to have an opportunity in Congress or something even bigger. She's gonna be like Kamala. You feel me? It's gonna be great. All right, so let's talk about her love life, right? It was cute to see B come back for a hot second, but I prefer them not to be together. I know a lot of y'all are gonna get mad at me, but that's just my preference, and I just didn't think that they went together. I would love to see Bet with a person of color. The Felicity situation looked real sexy, but I thought that it was really messy how they set up this ex-husband thing and how they let him kind of ruin her whole situation. I think there should have been a restraining order put on that dude right away, and then he wouldn't have showed up at the school and that whole situation would have been a thing. I don't know, I feel like that was true dramatic, you get what I'm saying? Overall, I'm really excited for this date that she went on at the end. I think that looks super sexy. I think that the dynamic between her and Angie is super cute. I love Angie's storyline too, so I'm just overall 
we're all excited, you guys. Let's talk about the season overall, right? I think it was a great introduction of just like these people and these new storylines and things like that. I know some people were like disappointed and they wanted this and they wanted that, but listen, we're not the writers. We gotta love what we have. We've just been waiting for this for so long that people's expectations were so high and if they didn't feel like they got it right away, they were just like, now I'm over it. And I'm just like, wow, you guys, I'm just happy with having it. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy with another representation of lesbians on television and just the queer community in general, especially on a big network like that. It's a bigger deal than most can understand. Okay, so let me talk about my cons and then I'm gonna talk about my pros. Right away, I felt like, yeah, there was like so much sexual activity going on and things happening really easily. And that's what kind of bothered me a little bit about the past because I think having those storylines all the time like that, the reason why people look at lesbians specifically as sexual objects, they think that we're easily attracted to somebody and we can easily just fall into having sex with someone. Am I the only one that feels like this? I think that Sophie and Finley being able to fall on that so easily kind of bothered me because that sh is not gonna fly in real life. Oh my God, are you kidding me? If me and my girl had some issues, we're still together. So to have a best friend there that I believe is just platonic friendship that's not, ooh, if I was Danny, I would fight the shit out of Finley. Am I tripping? Like, there's boundaries and there's morals that everybody should be able to live and follow. Listen, the lesbian community can be like that and that's partially why I'm only like a footstep in in LA because as soon as you try to date someone, you found out that she smashed a couple of the homies and I don't really like that. That's why I've put myself on the outside and then they become best friends later and all this stuff that just doesn't sit right with me. I think that friends should be able to do better at being friends and keeping that line. People assume some shit with me because a lot of my really good friends and best friends are more feminine than me and they're beautiful and I don't even look at them like that. There's not even an inkling, you feel me? They are my best friends and I am a good friend. Period. I'm not gonna have a drunk moment where we just like blah, 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 and ruin all these other shit that we got going on with each other and friendships between. No, that's crazy to me, you guys. So I wish that we could limit that a little bit. I want more strong relationships and good role models of relationships and less cheating, period. I would love another strong black character. I was hoping Tasha would be back, and now I might be biased on that, but I would love that. I would also love a drag queen character. I would love if like Finley explores being non-binary or bring on a character that would bring that on. I have just so many friends that are trans in the non-binary, gender non-conforming category, and that seems to be my norm around me more than anything, and I would love to see that represented. Can I get a gay man? Now my pros, you feel me? Some things that I was just really happy with seeing. I was happy with seeing some different representations. I loved how they brought up certain political issues like the opioid issue. I loved that they had Bet hit the blunt one time and normalize that because that's how it is in LA. But in general, I think that's an issue that um, is being tackled all over the nation, all over the country. And that's that was really cool to add that. Especially with Bet's character, I think that it really made a statement. I loved how they opened up the conversation of open relationships with the Thruple situation. That's real life. I love that. Let's explore that more. I love how they had the Roxanne gay person on at the end talking about feminism and the stereotypes that come with feminism. It's the overall improvement of women in general and I thought that was beautiful. More of that. And overall, I just love that they showed strong women that were successful at their careers and doing really well in that. I thought that was very good representation and that is so necessary and I cannot even tell you how many lesbians in this city are bosses in every single industry that you can think of. Like between my friends, they're like producers and the writers on shows. I think it just shows that like when you are kind of an underdog, you want to show up and be the best that you can be and just like prove everybody wrong. And I feel like there's so much of that within lesbians in general around the country and I would love more of that display. I hope you guys enjoyed this little recap. I would love to know what you guys think about everything that I said in the comments below. If you guys want me to get into more details, let me know certain subjects specifically that we can talk about and then I'll do another video video on it because I would love to in the season two maybe do a recap after every episode because I'm gonna try to be more organized then because that would be really good. I love you guys so much. Stay amazing. Stay proud. Stay woke. Peace.